What's going on guys, Chris Rennick here, and a lot of people have been asking for this video, so here it is. This right here is a 1997 Mazda Miata 1.8 liter, and she is turboed. Now before we talk about this thing, I just want to put it out there, and it's probably obvious, but I absolutely love this thing. I think it is gorgeous. I haven't actually gotten to romp on it yet and actually hit some boost, but this strictly reminds me of my Rice Miata with the turbo kit setup. <laughs> Yes, this thing looks a lot cooler. It probably runs a lot better because this one has a mega square and it is tuned by Jack. Mine was kind of just an FMU and I kind of just dailied around, have fun. But like, just looking at this man, it brings back so many good memories and like, it just makes me miss my rice and Miata and this car is so cool. So let's get into the details of this thing. Now, as you can see, it looks great from the outside. I really love this kit on this Miata, but this thing has a fully built engine. So let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what we're working with here. All right, so it's got the good old Honda mod here. If you want to just throw this up just like this, just go a little bit slow, just like so. All right, so as you can see, the engine has a bunch of goodies. It's got a bunch of different colors and it looks pretty gnarly. This thing's got manly rods, super tech, nine to one, 84 millimeter pistons, ACL race bearings, Wiseco piston rings, ARP head and main studs, ETI balancer, boundary engineering oil pump, cosmetic head gasket, Fab 9 top mount V-man manifold, Berg Warner EFR 6258, PTP Kevlar lava rock turbo blanket, a Turbo Smart external wastegate, BP Specialties coilover plug, injector dynamics 1050 injectors, a Walbro 450 pump, radium fuel rail, fuel lab pressure regulator, a GM flex fuel sensor, coil radiator, Paymax coolant reroute, Fab 9 intercooler, and Mishimoto catch can. And let me tell you, just from reading that, this car is ready to the drift. The owner of the car actually does drift this car. <laughs> And that is the reason why he built it. And as you can see, it is a little low. And when he dropped it off, I'm like, dude, this thing is so low. Like, how do you even drive this? And he was like, honestly, man, this is the highest it's ever been in its life. So like, check this out. This is the highest it's ever been in its life. It's absolutely insane if you think about it. Like I actually just drove it over here from my shop and I was just scraping flat ground. So I mean, I don't know how you do it, Bob, but that is super gnarly. I don't think there's anything else in this engine bay that you can actually modify. This dude went above and beyond with this build and it really shows. I mean, look at this engine bay. I mean, I just love all the color. Like even look at the intercooler piping. He went ahead and he got that stuff powder coated. This is nice, shiny midnight purple. And even if you look down here, you can see all the different colors of the upper and lower control arm, which, which is all not stock as well. As you can see, those are stance coilovers right there. Ooh, and it even has a Willwood proportioning valve right there. But if we go ahead and we close this hood, I'll give you a little walk around of the car. We'll talk about a couple more things. And as you can see, that is not a stock hood. And my favorite thing about this car is the hood dump and the external waste dump. That, it just looks so gnarly. And like, when you have a hood dump, when you have a wastegate dump out the hood, at night, all you see is just popping flames. But I will say it does get a little annoying because like if you have your window down, of course it's Florida and this thing doesn't have AC, it gets really hot and the fumes start to get in the car and over time you will get a headache. And also, like when you start up the car, I don't know if you can notice, but there's a bunch of oil drops right here. And that's from when you start the car with the dump pipe, a bunch of just oil particles just go up in the air like a volcano and they'll hit the hard top, they'll hit your windshield. If you hit the wipers, which I see he has them deleted, it smears your window. There's a lot, there's a lot of cons with a hood dump, but the pros outweigh the cons 100%. Even though there's a lot less pros, it, it's totally worth it in the long run, especially if it's not your daily. Like if you just want to go out, fuck around, have a good time, hood dump and external waste gate is definitely the way to go. And you're gonna break some necks, boys. So for suspension, we got the stance, XR1 coilovers, 10K front, 8K rear, destroyer die lower control arms, destroyer die extended brake lines, destroyer die drop knuckles, Zerk Vab tie rod ends, garage star rack risers, two inch shock mount drop, 
rear lower arms. For the wheels, we got the Workmeister CR1s, which, in my opinion, look amazing on this car. And of course, if you do all these modifications, he did polyurethane bushings all around the car. So all the subframe bushings, the upper control arm bushings, all of that stuff is new as well. So what I think really makes this car 100% is the wheels in the body kit. So this is a KBD body kit. We got the front bumper, we got the side skirts, and I'm pretty sure the over fenders are KBD as well. Don't correct me on that, but we also have a little wing spoiler. We have a hard top spoiler. Obviously the car has a hard top, it has no soft top. If you look inside, it has a full cage, which is super cool. This thing is drift ready. A Bride of Omax seat, Vertex wheel, which these are super expensive. It's got a pretty cool G-Force boost gauge right there. And also what I really like about this Miata is how like the AEM gauges look in the vents. And like, he doesn't have AC in this car and he'll never need heat. So I mean, deleting these vents means nothing in Florida. So he's got the air fuel ratio, he's got oil pressure, he's got oil temp and water temp. Pretty much every single thing you need. So if you're driving and something happens, you can catch it before your engine blows up. Hopefully the rod knock curse doesn't happen today. I don't know what kind of shift knob this is, but it looks pretty cool. It says max on the top and it's pretty sweet. But the bad thing about metal shift knobs in Florida is like, I'm holding this right now and it's literally burning my hand off. Like I bet you I'm gonna have a third degree burn, but ah, no, I'm just kidding. So I'm sure at this point you guys are probably like, all right, we've heard enough of the car, we've heard all the mods, let's go for a rip. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start the car, give it a few revs so you guys can hear what it sounds like with, with the hood dump and all, and then I guess go for a rip. I'm just excited as you guys right now because I have yet to hit boost in this car and I just can't wait to actually do it. So let's just go ahead, let's bring back some 17 year old memories and let's go have some fun and hit some boost. Here we go. So we are in the Turbo Miata right now. I am so excited to drive this thing. Before we go any further, I just want to tell you that this car is very loud. This car makes some vibrations, so I apologize in advance if you can't hear me good, but it is about 95 degrees out. It's actually the next day because I went to go film this video and my SD card was corrupt in my GoPro. I don't know. I got so much bad luck with these SD cards. Like I've broken three SD cards in the past month, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. YouTube doesn't want me to film anymore, apparently, so we're just going to drive around a little bit, you know, get used to the car, feel it out and everything, but let me tell you, I'm pretty fucking excited. The hood dumb man. She's a screamer. It feels so good to just be in an ignorant Miata again. Although this ignorant Miata is a lot more set up than mine ever was. I'm kind of excited to feel this thing out because it's probably going to feel like my Roadster, the 1.6 when it had a turbo on it because that one was also mega squared and tuned by Jack. So they'll probably feel pretty similar. Uh, Bob said this car is currently making 15 PSI and I think my turbo Miata only made ever 12. So this one should be a little faster. And it's got a built engine and everything so I'm sure it will feel pretty fucking good. Alright, we're already moving. Everything being flat and kind of nice. I mean, if you're gonna be this slammed, 
Florida is the perfect place for this car. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think we should change the look of the roads to the SR20 Roadster and actually like get a body kit on it? You think I should leave it how it is? The only reason why I'm considering that is because I kind of wanted to redo the body anyways because one of my fenders is completely mangled. It's got a lot of Honda on it, so it does, it does need some body work. So I figured it's either bring it back to stock or just put a body kit on it, slam it, put some nice wheels on it. I mean, who knows if he still has these wheels for sale. I might even hit him up for it. I just want to get on this thing, so let me get to Mexico real quick. Perks are living in Florida. My GoPro just overheated and shut off. We went from 100% battery to 20, and now I can't record anything because it's too hot, so I'm gonna try to film with my normal camera here. Here we go. guys so we just made it back to the shop um i had one hell of a scare so one minute i got the gopro facing outside i'm trying to get some flames for you guys trying to get it for the video and all of a sudden all the power gets shut off everything just shuts off and the car just turns off completely so at this point i'm like shit like what do i do like the car is so low that the road was actually going like this and like i didn't want to pull over because i didn't want to ruin his car i also didn't want to get hit i thought i blew the engine i thought rod knock happened again but turns out it was this little kill switch right here bob if you're watching this you need a little kill switch here but it scared the hell out of me man like so i guess this thing's a little loose and that caused it to shut off so on my way home i kind of just had to hold it there and make sure it didn't come loose again but anyways guys there it is this is bob's miata if you guys want to follow him on social media it's going to be right here right now super cool dude and i'm very happy that he let me borrow this thing take it for a test drive even though even though it was pretty terrifying towards the end but i'm just happy everything turned out but if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up if you guys want to subscribe for more subscribe for more let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about this miata any feedback helps i know i'm not the best editor out there but i think we got the job done i think the video turned out pretty well so let me know what you guys think and i will see you guys tomorrow peace out